Let's talk about this Michigan defense versus this Washington offense. We said it earlier. I don't know that there is a secondary in America that is about to lock up this Washington receiving core. I, I, I just, barring injury or, or tragedy, uh, <laughs> there's nobody matching up with these guys. Because I'm going to tell you something. I thought that, and this, this is kind of surprising, but I thought that Texas's secondary played one of the best games they've played all year against Washington. And, and I know that's kind of weird because it's like, well, damn, that Mark, they gave up 400 and something yards. They did. I understand. But, dude, it wasn't from being out of position. <laughs> I said earlier when we talked about this Washington offense, the quarterback, Michael Penix Jr., has the ability to, he has the ability to throw wide receivers open. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is something that it's, it's, it's a type of anticipation that, that can only be taught so much. I mean, instinctually, he's obviously just super talented. Um, I don't know that they're going to be able to lock them down. But keys to the victory for the Michigan defense, I think, is try to limit those big plays, obviously. But you're going to have to be able to stop the run without having the numbers to stop the run. And what I mean by that is, you're not going to be able to bring five or six guys. Because if you do, you will get burned. And I understand there's going to be points in the game where it's like, okay, it's third and ten. We're bringing extra help. Okay, do it at your own discretion because Michael Penix is very good. You're not the first one to have the thought that we need to get after Michael Penix. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it, we're, we're, 14, we're about to be 15 games into the year. Uh, everybody's tried that. Okay? And it's, it's really, really tough to get home on this guy even when you do blitz. But as going back to the run game for Washington, you're going to have to be able to stop that without bringing any extra help. And so that means you're going to have to go one-on-one, -on -one, get off a tackle, and tackle somebody. And for Michigan's defense, I think that that is a key to the victory in this one. Because if, if they can sit back, and have the adequate amount of numbers in that secondary and, and not be relying on somebody to get to the quarterback, as long as they're not having to, to cover for an unmanageable amount of time, I, I, think that, um, I think that they could be possibly successful slowing down this Washington offense some uh, if they can limit that run game. And, and by limit, I, I think you need to hold them under 75 yards. Um, for Michigan and, and in this situation. What, what's your thoughts on the Michigan defense matching up with this high-flying, high-powered uh, Washington offense? It's, it's, again, as we said in the beginning, it really is an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. Yeah, it is, and I'll throw these stats back up when we're timed uh, as I'm going through this. But, um, look, I mean, Michigan is – is is um top 10 in every defensive category that matters for the most part. Um, and, and um, Washington is sort of, I, I think in this game, it's fair to say that, that, that they're very limited with the, with the, um, their rushing attack with Dylan Johnson being limited. Um, and they're, they're kind of a one trick pony in this game, right? If they're not able to successfully um, run Michael Penix, because of the they're they're hamstringed with with the injury at running back, it is what it is. Um, so for Michigan, they're going to play zone. That's what that's what they like to play. That they're not a man team. They don't have the dudes like the 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 real dudes to play man um, in the secondary, right? So they're going to play zone, and then like you said, you've got to you've got to get off your routes and come up and 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 stop the run. So how well are they able to read that? And and read the run, and then and then shed their their um their uh um whoever they're 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 defending, and and go up and and stop the run. I think that that's a, a big key, but um but also you know the 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 Michigan defense they've got to get to Penix because he's gonna he's gonna sit back there and razzle and dazzle. Those receivers are gonna get open. It's not gonna take them long to get open. So you yeah. can't just put pressure. I know. A lot of these, and 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 obviously, if 
if you give him all day, he's he's more likely to, to make the pass than if you were to pressure him. I'm not saying that it's not um, effective to some degree, but eventually he's going to get open or, or somebody's going to get open and he's going to pass it to him. So the key to victory for Michigan and their defense for me is to get sacks. They need at least three sacks in this game, you know, in, in big plays, like third down sacks, you know, create pressure. Um, can your can your pressure rate be above 10 percent in this game? Right. Mm -hmm. That that's a that's a big key to me as well. Um, and um, and, and affect the quarterback as as, as much as you possibly can. Um, I, and I think that if they're going to do that, they're going to have to play zone and you're going to see a lot of blitzing off the outside, some cornerback blitz um, in order to do that blindside blitzing uh, with the cornerback, maybe once or twice in this game. Um, and maybe even a safety comes up and, and blitzes up the middle. You're going to see a lot of packages like that. And at this point in the in the game, y'all, we're at the end of the season. Just unload whatever you've got. You're, you're going to give them everything in the kitchen sink. So um, it, it should be fun to watch, but we're, we're really going to see uh, Michigan get tested like they haven't been all year long. This is the the offense that that um, Ohio State was supposed to be um, if they had a quarterback. But they, there's not a quarterback like Michael Penix in the country, and he, he's, he's teamed up with the three of the best wide receivers in the country. Yeah, I, I've said it time and time again over the last few weeks. I This wide receiver core and, and quarterback match uh, – group conglomerate whatever the f you want to call it. it it's i think it might be the best i've seen um it, it's just pound for pound man the, these polk mcmillan and adunze and and Penix. i mean man it, it is something to behold and um you know that's that's 40 percent of your offense right there man and, and all those guys are are uh absolutely amazingly talented and um let's let's just kind of Drop our thoughts on the game, man. Let's give them our prediction.